What is up YouTube? It's Kingfisher745 and this video is going to be our first look and overview of Spec Ops 23 and all the updates that came with it. So first things first, let's go ahead and look at the chapter briefing. Of course, this time around, Crystal is going to be the Spec Op Reward Hero, and we will take a closer look at her in just a moment. But first, Maximus the Mad reaches out to the Inhuman Royal Family and S.H.I.E.L.D. with troubling news. Thanos has broken free of his Amber Prison and is returning to Earth seeking revenge. A new army of test subjects appears as the first wave of the assault, but something about this attack feels off. How can S.H.I.E.L.D. be sure it's not just a mad scheme? Alright, so now that we have the basic start to the storyline, let's go ahead and see who the bosses are, and check out the weapons and gadgets that we can win. For the first mission, it looks like we're going to face Nebula, and the weapon is the Eldritch Relic. This is an AoE ranged psychic attack that exploits Delirium and has Psychic Vampire. So first of all, Exploit Delirium is the same thing that Morbius has on his level 1, and then Psychic Vampire says it steals health from an enemy, and steals more when the enemy has weak mind. So right away I can imagine pairing this weapon with someone like Emma Frost, and if she has the maddening A-ISO equipped on her level 9 mental trauma, she can hit the entire enemy team placing weak mind, and then as soon as you can use this weapon, Psychic Vampire should steal quite a bit of health. I'd actually be very interested to see just how much. Then moving on to mission 2, this is actually the mission that has the epic boss Thanos. And here we can see a little bit of what to expect when facing him. The deploys are going to be Hercules, Iceman, and Molly. So if you don't have any of those heroes yet, it's going to be a total of 380 CP. Then looking at the first weapon, it's the Pneumatic Sledge. It's going to be a melee tech sonic attack, and it looks like it will do a decent amount of damage. Plus, just think, since it's tech, it goes along with Fixer, and since it's a sonic attack, it can be used with Avalanche. In fact, it even causes collapsing infrastructure just like Avalanche. So all in all, not a bad weapon. Then moving on to the epic boss drop, it's going to be part of the new set, the Maddening Method set. And this is actually a gun range sonic vibranium tech attack. Talk about a lot of types. But anyways, it's going to have the Maddening Method set, and this could kind of be considered a debuff, at least unless you have another set piece. It's going to give you disoriented if you use it by itself. You could of course just use the satellite support and ignore that. But for each additional set piece equipped, you'll also increase the chance of resounding shot. Resounding shot says chance to apply disoriented to the opponent's team. And then the other special property of this weapon is, it has a chance to preemptively attack an enemy. Now the other interesting thing about this set, is it does look like we're going to have the option to research them in the lab. I for one like when they give that added option because sometimes it does prove difficult to win the items. Because of some of the low percentages on the roulette, I have a ton of incomplete sets. So yeah, this is a trend I hope they continue in future Spec Ops. Then moving on to mission number 3. In this one we're going to have a chance to win the Terrible Gaze. It's a ranged tech attack that hits all enemies, and it's going to cause living petrification. Well, it looks like only a 33% chance, but it says turn to organic stone, reduces evasion to zero, decreases damage received by 50%, and it shatters dealing damage if hit by sonic or vibranium attacks. So at first look, I'm not too big of a fan of this one. Even if I managed to win it, I highly doubt that I would use it. But anyways, now moving on to the Spec Ops 23 taskbar list. First, we get a blueprint for the Mad Tech Grenade. It's going to give you 4,979 offense and defense. So once again, this could be a great item for anyone who wants to upgrade their armory. Next, it looks like we get the blueprint for the Unrefined Echo Tech Blaster. This has Maddening Method, so for each additional set piece, it applies one stack of collapsing infrastructure. Then it also has Boon Buster. It causes buff blocker, so removes beneficial status effects from the target and prevents new applications. Then as you can see it does start with one collapsing infrastructure, and also it causes touch of madness on your agent. So chance to cause disoriented, possessed, and or mind control after use. After that we're going to get the blueprint for the unrefined psychotic blade. This says for each additional set piece it applies one stack of bleeding or shred. It also exploits Delirium, exploits Stun, and causes Pain and Tenderized. It's going to make your allies disturbed, 
and it once again has a chance to cause disoriented, possessed, and or mind control after use. So far the set seems okay, but remember these are the unrefined pieces. And the last item before Crystal is the Manic De-Amplifier. This is the Maddening Method 1 of 4 set piece. And it says Disoriented is removed with another set piece. And for each additional set piece equipped, applies one additional stat buff. This unfortunately does say it starts cool down, but it is a quick action. And it's going to apply Focus to all allies. And Clear Delirium. So it removes Disoriented, Mind Control, and Possessed. And then of course if you only use it by itself it's going to give you disoriented. Once again you could offset that with the satellite support. And last but certainly not least, the newest Spec Ops reward hero Crystal. She of course is an inhuman and a blaster. And she has two passives. First, Elemental Affinity, chance to preemptively hit attackers with Pyrokinesis or Hydrokinesis if they have burning or chilled. Cannot counter if polluted by poison. And then she has Royal Advisor, chance to apply Gale Force to allies after they attack, and she has an increased chance to apply Gale Force to allies when an Inhuman attacks. So when we go to our actual hero page, we'll hopefully find out what some of this means. By the way, this is the Heroic Age Crystal, and her first ability is Pyrokinesis. So it's a single target ranged fire energy attack, and it applies Scorch to enemies with burning. Otherwise, it's going to cause burning. So now we know what Pyrokinesis does, and next is going to be Hydrokinesis. It's a ranged ice attack that causes Frigid to enemies with Chilled. Otherwise, it's going to cause Chilled and Exhausted. So hey, any ability that causes Exhausted will take it. That's a very important debuff, especially for PvP. Then next, her level 6 Aerokinesis is a multi-function ability. But first, it will be a buff to all allies. And this is where we find out what Gale Force does. It's a shield that absorbs incoming damage and has a chance to interrupt incoming attacks. It also applies Winded to attackers. So that's a very nice buff and I'm really liking her passive about now. As far as her multi-function attacks, first we have Firestorm. It's an AoE catastrophic summon attack and it applies Scorch to enemies with Burning. It also says Engaged Element Fire, so only activates after performing Pyrokinesis. If the enemies don't have Burning, it's going to place Burning on all of them at once. Then you probably could have guessed these other attacks are very similar, but only they're different elements. So Dust Devil is an AoE attack that has Engaged Element Earth. It only activates after performing Geokinesis. And it's going to cause disoriented, blinded, and drain stamina on all the enemies. Then the final multifunction is Arctic Tempest. It's a summon ranged ice attack that hits all enemies once again. It's only activated after using Hydrokinesis. It applies frigid to enemies with chilled, or otherwise it's going to cause chilled on all the enemies. So now we only have one ability left and we already mentioned it. It's going to be Geokinesis. This is a melee ground attack that causes staggered, so cannot dodge most attacks, and ignores most avoidance effects. It also is going to cause grounded, and off balance. Now that's kind of weird that a ground attack causes grounded, but basically you'll probably want to use the erupting AISO. So that's going to be it for our first look at Crystal, and I am excited to get her, but I have to say I'm not blown away. I guess I'll just have to see more of her in action. And hey, at least she is a blaster so she's going to help out our attack bonus. But you know what, that's not even it for our updates, there's two other things that I want to mention. First of all, for level 300 agents, we can now gain XP once again. And at first this scared me because I thought, oh no, don't tell me they raised the level cap. But no, that's not the case at all, instead, what happens when you fill your experience bar at level 300 is, you gain one gold. So that's right, we'll continue to earn one gold every time we should level up, and I think this is a great addition. The only thing I'm sorry about is I wish it would have been implemented sooner. But hey, thank you PD for that. And then next, Black Bolt has been refactored. Now he's not completely changed, but he does however have a new passive. It's called King of the Inhumans. He now has a chance to summon a member of the royal family, granting a temporary benefit. 
So Crystal, Gorgon, Karnak, and Medusa can all grant a different benefit. That is, depending on who he summons. And then also, his ambient particles no longer has a chance to reduce damage. It now just flat out does. So that is very nice to hear. And then moving on to his abilities. First, his level 1 Kingly Fist no longer applies off balance. But it does grant ambient particles to Black Bolt. Then his level 2 Royal Flight now applies off balance. So yeah, his abilities aren't completely changed, they're just slightly modified. Good news though for his level 6 Whisper, it no longer begins cold down. So that's going to be an AoE catastrophic range sonic attack that applies incapacitation and buff blocker. And finally his level 9 power word gains brutal strike. So this is an excellent ability that can be a one shot and now it's going to have brutal strike. So all in all pretty decent improvements and I can't wait to see his new passive in action. As far as our first look at the newest Spec Ops and its updates, we have unfortunately come to the end. But I do want to let you all know we're going to do all the tasks from the task list, and I will be making videos of that later on. Lastly, I want to thank you all for watching, and ask you to please like, comment, and subscribe. And I wish you the best of luck in Spec Ops 23, and also take care.